Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Making an Impact with Zebu Nation and today we have for you the preseason spectacular for the 2019 MLS season. That's right, the calendar has finally turned. It is January of 2019. December is now in our rearview mirror. We finally escaped the postseason of last year. And now we're in the preseason of this year. It starts early. There is almost no end to the MLS season because it just rolls right into the right into the off season. But anyway, if you missed our last video, it was the postseason spectacular or the postseason roundup, and basically we went over the awards and things like that, the stuff that happens at the end of the season, the new budget. We had a pretty minor youth intake, had a few important emails and things like that, but nothing too incredibly exciting. We went over some of the various Major League Soccer rules and regulations that happen in the offseason, including a couple of the less exciting drafts. We had the waiver draft, we had the, uh, the re-entry draft where... You know, players who are cut or waived or otherwise gotten rid of during the season, they've got another chance to get get back into the league. But now we're going to move on to the more uh, exciting part of the year. We're going to start being able to make transfers in a, well, in a little while. I'm going to be honest with you. It's going to take a while before we get to transfers. But then we're going to, well, before that, we're going to have, you know, another waiver draft. We're going to have... The best draft, in my opinion, my most favorite draft, the MLS Super Draft. And that's what we're going to talk about right now. Because right at the end of the offseason, right at the end of December, you get a couple of emails that I showed you in the last video. One for the 150 players who have declared themselves for the MLS Super Draft. And one for the 10 or so players who have Generation Adidas contracts. Now, 65 of these players that I that come in that email, those 160, they all go to what's known as the MLS Combine. And the Combine is where they all get together and they practice together and they work out together in front of the scouts, in front of the agents, in front of the general managers, and they play some games. And so today... We're going to look at some of those games. So here we are. This is the MLS Draft Combine. It's January 11th. We've got one week to, to scout 65 players. And so what I do, I don't know that everybody does this. I don't know that you need to do it, but I do it just in case. Is I go to my scouting department, and I go to my assignments, and I clear the board. I say, everybody, stop whatever you're doing. You're scouting Cucamonga or Timbuktu, or wherever you're at, come back home because we are scouting the Combine and the Super Draft. So let's go. So you'll see occasionally, they'll show you these games. And um, this is really one of the only ways to scout the Combine itself, at least that I've found. It's kind of my favorite way. You look at the games, and you can see, just like any game, you can click on it and see who's done what. You can see Winhofer got the uh, player of the match for Team X. Had an 8.3 rating and a goal. He's a 20-year-old American. So we already know quite a bit about this guy, Bo Winhofer, from FA Euro, whatever that is. He's got nice physicals for a central defender type dude. Decent mentals. Uh, his... Determination is okay, could be a little better, but his work rate is nice. Technically, he's not so good, so not necessarily what we need. The other goal scorer here is Sykes, 8.3 rating, goal, assist, two key passes. He might be a guy to keep your eye on. He's Canadian, 23 years old. We don't know a lot about this guy, so we need to, we need to scout this guy. Canadian in the Super Draft, that's always going to pique our interest, so we got to take a look at him. Then over here on the other side for control, Martinez, their midfielder, scored a goal. He's We know a lot about this guy. Contracted to the Jersey Express. 
Uh, we know a lot about him, and we know he's not really good enough. This guy looks like a late round draft pick, you know, third or fourth round draft pick kind of guy. So we can take a look at the uh, take a look at the goals. Anyways, take keep our eye on Sykes. See what Sykes is up to. There's Martinez scoring the easy goal at the set piece for control. There's Sykes with the free kick. So he that's his assist off the set piece. So that's pretty good. And here looks like some sort of counterattack. Nope, there's McEwen going forward. Oh, we missed him. I guess we didn't look at him to see he scored their second goal for control. That was a nice you know, open field run. Splits the defense. This must be Sykes' goal. There he is running downfield. Keep an eye on him. It looks like he's playing sort of a poacherish role. But anyway, there's a nice strike. So yeah, let's keep our eye on Sykes for sure. So then what I used to do, what I usually do, click on him. See who we're currently scouting. So all of these guys are currently being scouted. We can see sort of our ratings already. There's a lot of people we don't really know much about. Sykes is one of those guys we don't know much about. But we are scouting him. The only guy we're not scouting right now is Lee Hampson. Defensive wing back on the left-hand side. 18 teamwork, 17 work rate, 21-year-old American. You know, do we need another left back? Probably not. So we're probably not going to scout him again. Now let's just roll down the teams here. See, there's Team Ace. We're scouting a lot of people on Team Ace except for Alan Metcalf. Generation Adidas player. Two and a half stars. So this is a guy who's probably a good impact player. No. No, not really. Nice pace and acceleration. 20 years old. Technically not so good, mentally not so good. Physically, he's just sort of really fast. The left winger. Got him 93% scouted. He possesses a lot of speed. We can see that for ourselves. Doesn't get stuck in. Fairly selfish. Will likely be a peripheral figure on the squad. So this is another guy we probably don't want to draft or spend much more time er, scouting. Because he seems like he's reached his potential, and his potential isn't really what we're looking for. So that's fine that we're not scouting him. Everybody else on Team Ace we're scouting. Now here, Team Chaos. Uh, we got Kabaki. Another right or left defender. Two star currently is what we got him rated at. Three star potential. Another generation Adidas player, as I mentioned. Let's take a look at him. Again, another left back. Do we need another left back? I don't think so. He's nice mentally. Okay physically. Technically, he's got a lot of work to do. We've got him 73% scouted. We know he's mentally tough. That's good. Brave. Can play in different positions. Uh, has work to do in the heading department. Needs to be taught to be an aerial presence, likely peripheral figure on our social group. So again, do we want to scout this guy? Even though he's a generation Adidas player, which, you know, those are usually the best players. But still, I'm not sure we want to scout him. So everybody else on Team Chaos were scouting. Team Control, we looked at some of these guys. There's Dick O'Brien, defensive midfielder. He looks pretty good. Very nice mentals. Pretty decent physicals other than pace. Nice technical. Well, he's got technicals where it counts, I guess. Marking and tackling are a little bit above average. So he's sort of an okay Generation Adidas, you know, second round pick. If you can get this guy in the second round, he'd probably be a steal for you because he could play right away. He might not get any better than what he is right now, but what he is right now is, is good enough to play in MLS. Two and a half stars. Is usually good enough to play in MLS. And who knows, maybe one day he'll reach four-star potential. But you never know. Everybody else on Team Control, we're already scouting. Team Control, not a great team other than O'Brien. They got the short end of the straw. There's Team X. We looked at them already as well. 
So there we go. We've looked at all four teams. There's only four teams. And that's the combine. You're going to keep getting emails like this. Your scouts are going to get to look at these guys each game, game in and game out. And you're going to get a little better impression of them. So I think we're going to have to pause it here. And I'm going to go through all of this stuff. If anything interesting pops up, I'll come back. But we'll come back for the Super Draft itself. And I'll try to find a way to make the Super Draft an interesting view. Rather than just me going, um, like, who am I going to draft? I don't know. Blah, 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 blah. But we'll try to figure that out. So, we're going to pause it here. Oh, You also get these reports right after the combine. You get the stock report. So, you can see these, these players impressed. This is by Adam Brads, our general manager, 37-year-old Canadian. He's got decent judging ability. So, he's at the combine. I told you, all the general managers are there. The scouts are there. A lot of coaches are there. Agents. Everybody comes to this, the combine to get a look at all these youngsters. So we got Chamberlain, a striker. The other thing we got to figure out is what do we want? What do we want from our roster? I was putting together the roster, and our roster is jam-packed, man. It's real tight in terms of space. Um, we're probably going to be getting rid of a couple of goalkeepers. We, we currently have... Uh, Three, four, five goalkeepers, which is too many. We're going to be getting get rid of at least two of these guys. Probably Jop and Bush. So that's going to free up a couple of roster spots. But in terms of actual positions of need, we don't really have any. You know, maybe central midfield, we could use a couple, a guy or two, not many. We've only got three draft picks this season, so that's okay. We can we can squeeze three more guys into this lineup. We don't really need fullbacks. We could maybe use central defender if there's like a really good central defender in the pick. But we've already got Jaguar we're looking at. You know, we've got Bosich back there. I mean, those guys aren't starting quality, starting caliber. But we do have Taylor, who run the, won the Rookie of the Year last year. He's a guy I want to get in there. And if not be starter, then I want him to be at least, you know, third man on the rotation. So it's going to have to be a really good, really exceptional central defender that we can take with our first round pick. But we've only got a mid round first round pick, so I don't know how good that's going to be. Do we need strikers? Not really. We got a lot of academy strikers we brought up. Do we need wingers? Possibly, but not many at all. So I'm thinking, in terms of super draft, you know, we're really limited in the type of players that we need. Midfield, central defense, and winger could be all that we need from this draft. So those will be the kinds of players that we'll look at, the kind of players we'll focus on, and hopefully we'll come back in the super draft and pick what I don't normally do, which is we'll maybe pick specific positions rather than just pick the best player. But that philosophy often goes out the window when you're faced with a really good player staring you in the face. You just got to sort of pick the best player sometimes. So anyway, we'll think about that and we'll come back and we'll look at the super draft. So we're going to pause it right now. Pause. Okay, we are back and it is draft day. Major League Soccer Super Draft Day. Draft consists of four rounds with 150 players available for selection. Our first pick is the 17th overall. Not so good. We could have done some wheeling and dealing, but we didn't necessarily need a ton of first round draft picks and all that kind of stuff. We had, we get three dirt first round draft picks last season as well as three other picks. So six picks in last year's draft. Our roster is pretty full and, um, yeah, we don't need a ton of players, but we still need players. We're always looking to improve the club. But before we get into the draft, let's take a look at our scouting. See how we've done. See what players we've found. Uh, let's take a look at uh, players' abilities here. See who we're up against. Got some interesting players here. Alex Richmond, defensive <laughs> midfielder, appears to be the best player. 
ball winning midfielder, three star already, three and a half star potential, 20 years old. So this guy is by far the top pick. I mean, pretty decent physicals, I guess. Really nice mentals. 18 bravery, 17 determination, work rate. Pretty good technicals, okay, for 20 years old, for a 20 year old. So he's looking pretty good. We probably won't have a shot at him you know, with the 17th pick, so we're going to have to look at some other players. Jose Luis Vazquez, that's another guy that I've seen several teams talk about and say, wait, they want this guy, attacking midfielder. Nice pace, nice, t nice physicals, nice mentals, nice technicals, 15 first touch, 13 technique. Yeah, he's probably the second best player in the draft. Here's a nice central defender, but he's injured. So this is something that's interesting. Sometimes injured players will drop in the draft. So we could possibly have a chance to pick this guy up. Kyle Hayduke, 21-year-old central defender slash defensive midfielder. He's okay. Pretty decent physical. Really nice pace if you're going to play this guy at central defender, even for a defensive midfielder. It's pretty nice pace and acceleration. 11 tackling, you know, his technicals aren't that good at all. Mentally, he's really good. 18 teamwork, 15 work rate. Great. So this guy's going to run all over the field. He is unambitious, so he's probably not going to get any better than this. But this is a capable reserve at worst for an MLS club. But what do we need? I mean, we looked at our roster. We need midfield, maybe winger. Maybe central defense. That's what we're looking for. Here's a central defender down here. Jay Flores. 17 jumping reach. Six foot six. He's pretty interesting. He's got low self-belief though. 16 teamwork. Only 10 tacking, tackling. 13 marking. 13 heading is okay. This is a complete reserve type player. Third round, fourth round pick type guy. Not really somebody to get too excited about. Let's see, is there any other way to sort these players here? Sort them by potential. We got uh, Rojo, 20 year old left defender. He's okay. Technically, not so good. So we got a lot of options here. We got a lot of interesting. Oh, look at this guy. Alex Ramirez, defensive midfielder. Segundo Volante, that's actually a position we need. That's actually good. 21 years old. He's interesting. Physically not so good. Nice strength, I guess, and stamina. But technically, really good. 14 tackling, 14 passing, heading, free kick taking. Mentally pretty good. Work rate is okay. Positioning okay. Determination okay. So this is a guy, I'm going to write this guy down. Alex Ramirez DM. He's a guy who's going to go on our list. Um, it's not a very long list right now. It's it's just him because there's just you know a lot of players, a lot of players who just don't fit what we need. How about our Canadians? Are there any good Canadians in the draft? There are exactly four Canadians in the draft, and we don't know much about any of them. There's Sykes, our guy we watched score the goal. He is 23 years old. We didn't learn much more about him in those two games. Oh, man. Contracted to the Calgary Foothills. He could have nice pace. He could have nice mentals. He's probably got really bad technicals. First touch could be average at best. So I don't know. This guy we could maybe. No, we're not going to. I don't think we're probably going to draft this guy. But uh, Cabrillo, 23 year old. Another, another older guy. Nice leadership, I guess. But again, we don't know much about him. We didn't scout our Canadians very well. We should have scouted them first and foremost. Attacking midfielder. Decent physicals, I guess. Pretty good mentals. Teamwork, vision, work rate. It's okay. Technically, he's okay. So he's a possibility. He's 21. So, you know, drafting a 23-year-old is just not a great idea. 
You're not going to get much out of him. He's not going to get much better than he currently is. So it's just not a great idea. Twenty, Even 21 years old is sort of the high end of what you want. You don't really want to draft anybody much older than that. And finally, we got Zakharov. Nice pace. Flair. You know, he could be a potential for our winger. You know, we're looking for a winger. Their fourth round pick. Maybe a winger. I, I, we do have a fourth round pick, yes. Draft allocations. What do we got this season? We got a first and two seconds. Oh. So what am I even talking about? I thought we had a first, second, and, or first, third, and fourth. But no. First and two seconds. So. We're actually going to be looking at a higher quality of guy. Ramirez is definitely a guy who's, who's on our radar. Alright. So. Midfielder. Winger. Central defender. That's what we need. Let's go to the draft and let's kick it off in style. All right, so we're going to set the condition here to drafted equals no. That way, the as they get picked, they'll drop off our list. And then we're going to go here to scout style so that we can see our or maybe scout transfer. Yeah, scout transfer so we can see their age and their ability. Those are really the two most important things. So we got them sorted here by our scouting ability. You can see here we could also sort them by recommendation. So Valencia is our number one recommendation. 21-year-old advanced playmaker. Pretty good, I guess. Anyway... In order to speed this along, we're just going to skip to our next pick. We're going to skip over everybody because you don't know who the draft picks are. I don't really know who the draft picks are. We haven't picked out any too many special players. So we'll just be able to see if they're gone or not. I mean, we're going to keep our eye on Ramirez here, who's actually one of our top players that they think we should pick. And we might actually pick him. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see who's left. All right. So skip to our next pick. So the one thing that does is it gets it you sort of lose your chance to make a lot of trades. Um, Houston Dynamo. So they'll take our 17th pick in the draft. They're offering Toronto's first pick in 2020 in return. So that's next year's draft. So the question is, with our roster as bloated as it is, do we actually want to trade away? Now, Toronto probably is not going to have a very good pick next year. They'll probably be pretty good, but we don't know. They could fall apart. They kind of fell apart this season. I guess we gotta we got to ask ourselves, is Toronto going to have a bounce-back season? Or are they going to you know, lose all of their top players and go in the tank? Um... Let's go back to the draft real quick. See who's available with our pick here. Alright, alright, alright. Come on, boys. Let's let's sort this out. Got all discombobulated here. We got a lot of good players right now who are available. Valencia, Keiston. What is he? The right defender we don't need. Valencia. That advanced playmaker, which we also don't particularly need unless he can play. He can kind of play in the middle, but not really. We don't really need another guy like that. Bravo, Rivera. Let's see who's been picked. A lot of our best, a lot of our favorite players have been picked. Richmond, Hey Duke, Kabuki. There's Ramirez. Ramirez has been picked. So I think he was the only guy that we really wanted to spend a first round draft pick on. So since we don't need any of these two top players here, Dakota Gomez, central defender, not really what we're looking for in terms of central defender, physically not so good, five foot 11. Physicals, just sort of really super average. Technically okay. Mentally pretty good, but it's not really what we look for in a central defender. 
Um, Hesco. The ball winning midfielder. This is a guy we could pick, but is he is he first round material? I don't know. We could probably get him second round. So I think we're gonna I think we're gonna pull the trigger. I'm gonna pull the trigger on this trade with Houston. We'll give them our pick. We'll take a first round pick from next season. And yeah, we'll just accept that. Houston Dynamo completed trade with Montreal Impact. So that sort of gets rid of some of our roster issues. We didn't necessarily need a first-round pick. So we got rid of a first-round pick. That's good. All right, back to the draft. That made that made everything simple. Skip to our next pick, second-round pick. We got back-to-back -back picks, the 39th and 40th pick. Nobody's offering anything for these guys, so we're going to have to pick somebody. I don't know that we can modify this at all. Oh, yeah, we can. Customize view. I want to add position to this. If we can. Contract favorite. No, we can't. What about if we go to one of these other ones? Um, general info. Can we modify this and add, like... Uh, because none of these have exactly what we want. You know, are there any Canadians left? Very interesting. None of these have um, all of the stats that we want. So let's add, if we can, place of birth, salary, club, nationality, no. Okay, so we got three Canadians left, but uh, I, don't, I definitely don't think we want to take any of these guys. Like I said, maybe Zakharov. Nah, we got, we got guys better than him just hanging out. So let's just take it on ability or potential. <laughs> Dakota Gomez is still hanging around there, the central defender. Again... Just sort of average physically. He's the best left in terms of potential. Here's another defensive midfielder, Nasco. Good physically. He's got tackling. He's got 14 tackling. I think we're going to go for Nasco here. Let's see what we know about Nasco. We've only scouted him 63%. Um, he's very one-footed. But he's very brave, has a sporting attitude, possesses a fair amount of speed, can play a couple of positions. He can play in the midfield a little bit, maybe. He could probably be retrained. Played central defender a little bit. His jumping reach isn't really what we want. But physically good. Potential good. He's got one major league skill, which is tackling. So let's take him. Nasco, right? That was the guy? Yeah. Defensive midfielder. 14 tackling is good enough to play in a pinch. So we're going to draft Nasco. All right. Are you sure? Yes. We needed another defensive midfielder. We got another defensive midfielder. All right. So let's... Oh, we got our second pick in a row here. I forgot we had two picks in a row. So who's, who's best... Oof. Again, we're going to be getting like two-star guys with three-star ability here. Hunter Plant. Winger. Yeek. Yeek. Maja. He's okay. He's got marking. What is he? He's a central defender. 5'11". I don't know about that. Kroenke. What is he? He's an advanced playmaker. Again, a guy we don't necessarily need. Nice pace. So we're really sort of hitting the lower end of guys. We, this is not a very good draft this season, if I'm honest with you. 
Either that or we just didn't scout them very well. Dakota Gomez. And he does have the really good mentals. He does have the best potential left. Very brave, balanced personality. Make him a good team player. Can successfully re be retrained as a defensive midfielder. So that's another sort of tweener type guy we've got. Center defender. Defensive midfielder. I mean, I guess if you pick enough of these guys, maybe one of them will stand out and be able to play for you. Because we already have Jaguar, who's basically this guy. Um, but I don't see anybody else who's really, who's really good or really interesting. Not that we've looked too incredibly hard. And look at all these guys we haven't scouted. So we don't know, like, half the guys left. So no good. Alright, so we're bogging down here. But I guess... Ah, this guy can play right, left, or center defense. Um... Um, uh, I've lost, I've lost the guy. I lost who he was. I forgot his name. I forgot his, I forgot who he was. Gomez? It's Gomez. Yes, it was Gomez. The guy at the top of the list. Alright, let's just take the guy with the best potential. The best ability and draft him. Alright. So I guess it's good that we only had two picks in this draft because it was not a strong draft. So there we go. We'll complete the draft and get out of here. That's another interesting thing about the Super Draft is it is a little bit of a jackpot. A little bit of a crapshoot. So let's see. What, uh, what do we got here? Contract offer for NASCO. We'll make him a reserve. Sure, get out of here. And for Gomez, likewise, reserve 55000 So these guys are going to cost us next to nothing. And we can either just get rid of them or send them out on loan or do whatever we need to do. Probably send them out on loan. So that's fine. They look like they, they would be very fine additions to some Nordic football team out there. All right, so we'll uh, advance here for a minute. And then we'll check out what we got coming up on the schedule. So the draft didn't turn out too exciting, unfortunately. I was hoping that it would, you know, we could at least have some sort of insight into there, but it it does still need a lot of work. I mean, they don't have they don't have a lot of the tools and things that you would like to see, like they've got in some other games. There aren't a lot of games that handle their drafts very well, though, if I'm honest with you. Even NBA 2K, which has been doing it for years, they don't really have their drafts down very well either. But it's it's a little better than here, but not entirely better. So we got, uh, where are we at? Montreal. We got a C for this draft. I guess that's okay. A lot of times I'll pick what I think is a great draft, and they'll give me like a failing grade. They'll give me an E. They'll say they hate everything. So I don't I don't know exactly what they pick on. Why all these guys got A pluses, I don't know, but we'll see. So let's see, let's take a look at the schedule, see what we got coming up here in the calendar. You can see we got our first friendlies of the year coming up. We're going to take a look at at least one of those, but it's still a good like five weeks until the transfer window opens. And then we've got, you know, our big friendly of the year is Medellin down here. We're going to go down there to Colombia, play against Medellin, see how we're, see how we match up against them. But we have, other than our first friendly here, which the computer scheduled for some reason, I've managed to schedule a fairly decent preseason in terms of weather. 
So we're going to Fort Lauderdale. We're going to Charleston, South Carolina, Tampa Bay, Florida. We're going down to Brazil to play Atletico. We're going to Louisville. It could be a little cold, but Louisville is still, uh, you know, still southern-ish. Anyway, San Diego, very nice. Sacramento, and then Columbia. So I think we might even get rid of this Vancouver Whitecaps friendly because I don't really want to play in the snow, if I'm honest with you. At, uh, you know, January 30th, 30th going to go across the country to Vancouver. I guess Vancouver, it would be like maybe rainy over there. They don't they don't get a lot of snow, oddly enough, because they're such they're on the Pacific coast. So you know it gets cold, but not a ton of snow in Vancouver. Now around Vancouver, like in the mountains and stuff, sure, but not necessarily in the city so much. But anyway, enough enough geography or whatever that was. Let's uh, pause it here. And we'll come back for transfers and our final preseason game of the season so we can get a look at this team and see how we're, how we're looking going into the season. I will say there have been some rumblings in the roster. We've had to appease some guys. We've had to have some interesting arguments with some of our best players wanting to leave and... Um, had to talk them out of it so i don't know exactly how this roster is going to shape up you know um let's see who were we looking at here mancosu got homesick he wanted to go back home so we let him go back home he is um we let him go back to italy but I think he still wants to go there, so we might have to trade Mancosu to Italy. Which isn't the end of the world. We'll save a lot of money that way. We're replacing him at striker, so it could actually be for the benefit of everyone. And then uh, our big man in the middle. Why is he not starting? Why is he not starting? Tader. Tader apparently got it in his head that some uh, some Premier Division team was coming after him, which I don't think they were. Nobody offered for him. No, no English Premier League team offered us for him, but he's got it in his head that somebody wanted to come get him but look at this, no offers, no interest, no nothing. So we had to have a sit down, talk with him and say like, what are you talking about? And he was not happy about that. So our captain, or not our captain, but our best player, our designated player is currently not happy. So we're going to have to figure that out. Wants Bournemouth. Wants to join Bournemouth as they offer high salary. So maybe we should have just offered him a bigger contract, but whatever. We'll, we'll work those out and come back momentarily 